day and welcome to the Wednesday, March 24th edition of the Island Stack Sports Brief. I'm Earl Baisley. Bermuda's long awaited kickoff of the World Cup qualifications takes place on Thursday with their match against Canada that will go a long way towards determining who makes the final round. The Bermuda Football Association announced the 23 player roster that will represent Bermuda for the first round of the CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers match in Florida. But it was coach Kyle Lightborn who expressed his concern with how Canada had been behaving. But one thing I do know that um, Canada's been playing quite dirty um, the whole time. And we do know that they have been spying on us, you know, and that and and, in the coaching fraternity, that's a no no. You know, we're a small nation. We see what's going on. We got a, a, a behind closed door match and they send someone with a drone to watch us. That shows you that they're worried about us. Yes. You yeah. know, so um, we, we managed to shut that down, but that doesn't sit well with me as a coach up against another coach. I don't think myself personally, I would ever do that to, to someone, um, to another team out of respect for the game and, and for myself. So he just poured a lot of uh, fuel onto the fire. And, and my players are well aware of that. Mm -hmm. so. Phenomenal swimmer with dual citizenship, Elon Daly will compete for Canada. On lockdown in Canada since the shutdown in the early stages of the coronavirus outbreak, Daly, who has lived in Canada for nine years, was one of the youngest members invited to train with Bermuda Jade Hanna in the Ontario High Performance Centre with several Canadian most elite swimmers. During the show, a walk down memory lane last evening, Kelvin Bummy Simon talked about how he got started playing football. I got started, I had two brothers. And I got started with them when I was five years old. And during that time, I was the family was staying on St. John's Road, Pembroke, by the Barclay Institute Road. We used to play on this field called the box, called the sports arena. Mm -hmm. and what's going on up there now? I couldn't believe it. But otherwise, and then uh, my brothers was Norman and Cliff. Norman played with Young Man Social Club, and Cleveland played with Best of Stars. And during that time, my uncle, Gladden, the sober, made me a cricket bat with wood. He couldn't get me out because I think the face of the bat was six, six inches wide. <laughs> so up until then, until I went to school at Northern, I was always into sport. Larry Hunt also described his start to football as well. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with Mr. Simon. We, we came up with two different eras. And I started my ball at St. Anthony Glebe School. Um, from St. Anthony Glebe School, we went to Sands. And then after Sands, we, I played for some of the junior team. At that time, it was only a junior division. So I played there until I got it, eventually got into the, the first um, team, which was some years later. But um, it was worth the whole time that I, I had spent like two years on the, two and a half years on the bench. And it's mm -hmm. unheard of today where I was sitting on the bench for two years and not getting a game. And my chance finally came. We had just won the league, I think it was in 65, 66. And then the coach came, something and beat us 6 2. And we played the following week. Conway made fire changes, uh, and I was one of those changes, and never looked back. Despite a brave second half showing by Justin Dunawa and his determined Sully Hall teammates, they fell to the nil at third base Torquay United last evening. Jonte Smith came off the bench to help Walking FC defeat Wellstone 1 to nil. The Professional Golf Association Stroke Play Championships continued at the Tucker Point Golf Club. 
Dwayne Pearman remained the leader after his even par second round to remain at one over par. While Chaka De Silva joins him at one over par after his second round one under par 69. Scott Roy is in third. He shot a second round one over par 71 to come off the golf course at two over par. Meanwhile, Daniel Augustus concluded competing on the APGA Tour at the World Golf Village in St. Augustine, Florida. Augustus started the day in third place, but a second and final round, six over par 78, saw Augustus finish tied to pink at four over par. Augustus' second round saw him card two birdies, ten pars, four bogeys, and two double bogeys. The committee members of the former Cup Match Players and Officials Association are requesting that all former players and officials provide their details to the association. Your details will be used to help construct and maintain a database of former players and officials which will allow the association to 1. inform you of upcoming events, 2. supply you invitational for events, 3. recognize milestones and achievements, and four for other informational purposes. Izzy Madeiras and her Barry College equestrian teammates continued their trip to Lynchburg, Virginia to compete against the University of Lynchburg. In the hunt seat competition against the University of Lynchburg, Madeiras was one of three riders who gained a point on the flat, with Madeiras also taking a point in the over fences, giving Barry a 4-2 victory. Madeiras was named the most outstanding rider on the flat. A day after bringing you the update at Cross Island, preparing for the hundreds if not thousands of fans over the two days of the CLGP event, today we bring you the news that the Danish helm, Nicola Hestad, revealed that an all-star crew consisting of Olympic medalists, world champions, and round-the-world racers will fly the Danish flag at the Global Race League in 2021-2022. And that's a look at this Wednesday, March 28th edition of the Island Pets Sports Brief. I'm Earl Basie.